Ooh. Hello, TikTok Live. I don't see, I don't know if anybody's actually on this yet. I'm not sure where I'm supposed to look for people and whatnot. Oh well, anyway. Hi, so today we're at the New Orleans Museum of Art. Or I should take this off to make it easier. Today we're at the New Orleans Museum of Art. Um, I wanted to come here for a couple of weeks now, but I just wasn't able to because the weather and I have a nine to five, unfortunately, too. So I've been working a lot, <laughs> doing a lot of stuff that doesn't have to do with this if I wanted to do this really badly so um, I asked a few friends but they didn't really want to go either so I decided I just go by myself because I mean you don't need friends to go and do fun educational stuff so yeah today I'm gonna be walking around the Museum of Art I did try to call them to ask if it was okay like three different times but each time I wasn't able to actually get a human being I just got a recording so I just came with my phone and hopefully they won't be mad about it. They do say you can do uh, photos for personal use and this live is like, it's not forever. It's just a moment of liveness. So we'll see, but in the meantime, at least I'm going into the museum now. So I'm gonna switch the camera just so you can see the Museum of Art's point of view. Actually, maybe I could even show you some of the things out here before I even, well, they do have a sculpture garden. We have a sculpture garden I'm gonna take you to after this. But first and foremost, I'm gonna go into the museum. Since it's a museum, obviously you have to be quiet. So shh, don't talk too loud. We don't want them to know that I'm doing all of this. But yeah, after we do our initial tour of the inside of the museum, then I'm going to go outside and look at like the sculpture garden and stuff because I think that's really fun. And again, I would have made a bigger announcement about this. I feel like it's better to actually announce things like this, but I'm still getting used to how to do live and whatnot. So it, it's a new experience for me. So I tried to preset a date for this, but again, I didn't know if I was gonna be able to do this and actually come to the museum because none of my friends wanted to come with me. So you're gonna be my friends. You're gonna be my museum dates for the day. So yeah, let's go. How do I flip the screen now? Do I have to like stop the live to flip it? Probably. I'm just gonna leave it this way. Alrighty. Again, we have to be quiet because we're inside of the museum. Luckily, we're the only people in the museum, so that makes it a lot easier for you to hear me. Hi, <laughs> good to see you too. Okay, good. I wasn't sure or not. Thank you, Missy. <laughs> so, this is the first room. You know what? Just to be proper about this, I want to make sure I actually read the blurb. This is the early Italian art in this section. So, everything you see in here is sort of a Sistine Chapel sort of vibe. So, here's this one. I really, maybe I should flip the camera. <laughs> I don't want you to have to just keep seeing me. But I'm not really sure how to do that, so you'll get a bit of me and the art. Or actually, let's just hold it like this. There we go. Also, sorry, this is very like fly by the handle. <laughs> I'm going to read each of them too, just so you know what you're looking at. This one is Vincenzo Papa. Papa? Vincenzo Papa? You would know better than me. <laughs> Uh, professional enough. This one is Vatteo Bartolo. It's hard to tell. <laughs> yes, this is the uh, Noma Mu the New Orleans Museum of Art that I'm at right now. Oh, super important. It's um, <laughs> it's free to residents every Wednesday. Um, a lot of people don't know that, but for kids and teens, because of a program, it's free every every day for teens. But for adults that are here, um, it's free every Wednesday. A lot of people don't know that, and I didn't know that for the longest time, but yeah, it is free on Wednesday. Also, they said I didn't have to wear the mask, but I just want to be, like, not a jerk, so I'm just going to keep wearing the mask for now. Well, nobody's around. I don't know. The mask thing, I just, if I see anybody around, I'll put it back on should be able to hear me since I have to talk kind of low. Um, this one is Gio Giovanni del B Biondo. My Italian um, is non-existent, so <laughs> if I butcher the names, please forgive me. That's not my intent. Hi. This one, oh. <laughs> I would I'd probably suck it up as being an art critic. Is that the name of the artist or the name of the piece? Because I saw that name over here too. Okay, apparently this one is also 
uh, Tadeo di Bartolo. I see this name up here. I assume that's the name of the painting, but that's like the second kind of painting like that I've seen. This one is Benedictino di Giovanni. Oh, this one's really beautiful. It's really interesting too. It looks like these two dudes are judging this one chick and she's just like, oh, me? You're just mad because I'm the baddest. And look, she even got a pet dragon. That's why they hate. And they're like, oh, she got a dragon? She thinks she bad? She's like, I, I do think I'm bad because I do have a dragon. Where's yours? And this one is called Follower of Bernardo Gotti? Follower? Oh, pff, this is the name. This is the name. <laughs> this is the name. So the name of this one is Madonna and Child with Saints. So let's back up some. There we go. This one's really interesting too. And if you look, you can see they even have cool little details, like they have people inside of the little triangle thing. <laughs> Again, I'm not a professional art <laughs> guide and it shows because, yeah. <laughs> this one is called Christ on the cross between Virgin and St. John. That's pretty self-explanatory, except that's a very old virgin. No shade, but okay. <laughs> this one is called the Adoration of the Magi. So basically this looks like it's a depiction of when Christ was gifted things upon his birth. I want to say this could be the wise men, but Again, I'm not an art historian. Oh wait, there's also blurbs that you can read so you can fake like your art historian. After the birth of Christ child, the Holy Family visited by kings all the other So yeah, yeah, it's telling the story of that, so yeah. <laughs> this one is called The Coronation of the Virgin. Yeah, that looks like that's about what's happening. <laughs> this one is called St. Lucy Lead Her martyrdom. Oh, St. Lucy lead her to martyrdom. So, it seems that she's off to go and die, basically. And it seems that people are being super hateful. So, yeah. And the last one in this section, this one is called The Last Supper. Very easy to figure out. <laughs> I'm going around people again, so I'm talking low, and I'm putting my mask back on. So yeah, it's just a young lute player doing his thing. This one is Portrait of a Man in Armor. Some of these are pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> he looks pretty cool though. I'm most looking forward to the stuff in the sculpture garden because those are Christ Child and Annunciation of the Shepherds. There's somebody being visited by an angel up there. And then down here, they actually have the baby. The skin on this baby is really, really realistic looking. This one is called the Meditation of St. Jerome. So he's just hanging out under a tree, thinking about life. We all do that from time to time. But he has a pet lion. <laughs> and I guess that's a picture of some people who know us and you can see in the background. Portrait of a man. Pretty self explanatory. <laughs> he looks creepy though. He kind of looks like that guy from Ghostbusters, Vito. <laughs> this one is Madonna and the Child with St. John the Baptist. Oh, yeah, there we go. This one is called Christ's Blessing. That's a nice thing to have, St. Lucy, I like that. Thank you for your blessing, St. Lucy. This one is called Vanity of Earthly Love. I don't really 
really see that represented too much, but it's their thing to name. This one's called Venus and Cupid. That makes a lot of sense. It looks almost exactly like that Venus uh, painting with her in the shell. Ooh, this one looks interesting. This is, oh, okay. <laughs> Death comes to the banquet table. You kind of can't see, but right over her shoulder is like, it's trying to get the glare out of the way. There we go. There's a creepy skeleton hanging over her. I'm going to come back up. You can see it even better. Oh, this one? There we go. See, it's kind of hard to see because these kind of, they have some figures like this man. I'm not sure if it's faded over time or if he's meant to be like a ghost representation of somebody, but you can see that he's not as finished off as everybody, just like this little skeleton ghost man. He's also holding the hourglass like he's trying to say, time's almost up. <laughs> You're almost dead. <laughs> um, this one is called St. Sebastian. He's been hit by a few arrows, but he's still making it through. We're going off into the next section. This is the Thomas C. Keller Gallery. And this is still, we're still on Italian. The first floor is Italian. Um, I haven't been here in a few years, but first floor is Italian. Second floor, um, I think is African-American history. Uh, third floor, I think they have like four floors and all. Third floor, I believe is like Asian history, maybe. But we're gonna find out because we're going to all the floors because they don't close until five. I'm hanging out with one of my friends later on at five. So that works out perfectly, so. I really, really wanted to do this. Like, I think this is like fun, just showing you the art in here. And I get to see it for myself because I haven't been into the art museum in seven years. Seven years, I want to say, probably sooner than that, but still. I haven't actually gone around and seen things like this in a while. This is Madonna and Child with Goldfinch. Oh, I guess that's the type of thing that they painted because I don't see them holding anything gold looking. This one is a saint reading, which, yeah, that's exactly what that is. <laughs> they look really nice too. Hi, hi Stephanie. I'm giving an art tour. <laughs> Even though I have to like read them as I go because I don't really know enough. Landscape with travelers. So, oh wow, this is really cool. Um, the hard thing about the phone is that you can't really see everything in detail. Like I'm seeing it with my human eye. So I'll kind of scan over it but it's just like a C. There's a lot happening in this one. It looks like from what I'm seeing, some people are rowing their boats in like really turbulent water and there's a castle or a city up there in the background. This is one of those paintings that I could honestly, I would be able to stare at for hours just because there's so much happening in it <laughs> that it would take forever. Like you just sit there and just like, uh. <laughs> this one is the presentation of the Virgin in her temple. Yeah, a lot of these, like, they have titles that, that don't always match, but then some of them have titles. It's like, yeah, that makes sense. That, that fits. So this one is just that. <laughs> it's the presentation of the Virgin of the Temple. Pretty self-explanatory. Oh, this one's cool. It looks like they're going to World War. This looks like Greece, I want to say, or Rome, I should say. Ancient Rome. I see people dying and people, like, some people are dying, some people are dead, some people are just talking, and some people seem to have a dispute verbally while there's a dead body sitting right next to them. <laughs> like, hey man, you can't park your horse there, but there's a dead body there. But that, apparently, that's how things were back in the day. <laughs> this one is called St. Augustine standing before St. Andrew seated with his, seated with his cross, seated. <laughs> try to keep it as still as possible. This one is boy holding a book and looking super creepy about it. This one's very intricate. This one is called the baptism. Oh yeah, that definitely makes sense. This is another one of those that absolutely makes sense for what it is. This one is called Esther at the throne of, ooh, no, that word, 
that word right there. <laughs> Can't pronounce it. If you can pronounce it, you'll know what the word is. Um, at the throne of Asurus? Asurus? I'm going to go with Asurus. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to sound it out, but even when you sound it out, it's like, mm, no. <laughs> this one is St. Joseph and the Christ Child before 1762. Nice. We're almost out of the Italian zone. The Italian paintings are always like really beautiful, really lifelike, but they are so like depressing. Ooh, this has a lot of, like, oh, this is like the intermix. Yeah. Oh, cool. Souvenirs of Earth. Oh, this is a cute one. I like this one. If you had to leave Earth, what object would you take with you as a souvenir? So that's, that's kind of based off like pharaoh ideas. Like pharaohs would think that they could bring things with them into the afterlife. So that's a cool thought. I don't know what I would bring with me, honestly. I don't think I would want to bring anything. <laughs> I'm pretty. Oh, look at that. That's cool. I might come back here for a selfie. It's too much space in between. Oh, well. <laughs> So I'm going to the other side of the Italian, and then we're going to go upstairs. Oh look, this is something worth seeing too. This is a wall of all the patrons that have helped to keep the museum going. I think that's definitely a great thing to put up there. People need their credit, you know? Oh wow, it's super dark in here. Oh cool, so this isn't... Okay, yeah, this is the Northern European Renaissance. So. We're already done with the Italian, which is good, because as I was saying before, Italian paintings are really nice and really lifelike, but they're so serious, and they often, especially like the religious one, they're often so just like, oh, come on now, cheer up. <laughs> this one is the lawyer's office. And it definitely it looks like that. These guys look like, especially him, he's probably the lawyer. He looks like the one that's like, yeah, just sign it all away. I'll take care of you. And the rest of these poor people are just like, really? Are you a good lawyer? Will you be nice to us? He won't. Spoiler alert. <laughs> this one is called Apollo and the Muses. And that makes sense again. Apollo and the Muses in the way. You can see there's a little baby hanging out here too. Just like, I don't know what he's up to. I don't know. Also, sometimes with paintings, it's hard to tell. I'll put me here. Oh, the lighting's good right there. I don't know sometimes when I see things like this if like is he supposed to be a ghost or like a spirit or is he actually supposed to be there because if so why are they letting that baby be bad that baby's real bad but otherwise it's really cool looking some of the features too and this one the bodies are very very much on point but the faces are slightly exaggerated I'm not sure if that's an on purpose thing or if that's just their particular style of painting too because that could also be a thing this one is called Virgin nurse, virgin nursing Christ child. I don't know why they don't just put Christ. They always put Christ child. It's usually he's depicted as a baby. So it's like, we know. We know what that is. If one's Mary, we know what the other one is. This one is a saint dispensing alms to the poor. So he's giving money to the poor, basically. And again, this is like I think meant to be a little child, but if you zoom in close, that looks like a fully sized adult sitting on top of that woman. But I've seen, and I remember they talked about, like people used to do that in times, like they weren't as good as drawing, at painting babies. So they would just kind of paint them like mini adults sometimes. Sometimes it wouldn't be noticeable, but other times it's very much like, this looks like a little old lady sitting on top of her head. But it's still beautiful. Just because it doesn't look like a kid doesn't mean like it's any less cool. This is also interesting. Okay, so I think that is just his leg. At first I thought I saw hair, so it was meant to be his leg like ripping open to show more leg. But no, that's just his pants ripping open. <laughs> Again, I wouldn't be like the best art curator because it's like, this is this art. <laughs> this one is Venus, Venus mourning the death of Adonis. Well, that makes sense. I'm both, ooh, wow, 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 wow. Wow, that is one of the most terrifying things I've ever seen in my entire life. Wow. Oh, wow. 
Oh, it looks like he's, oh my gosh, <laughs> this scared me. <laughs> but anyway, ignoring him, <laughs> um, that is sad. And they painted um, Adonis really great. Like the, you can see like the sort of fleshiness in his body. Like if you look at, yeah, if you look at it through the camera, like this looks like a human body right here, especially when you compare it to mine. They did amazing with that. But that thing, that thing is horrifying. I don't know what they were doing with that. I don't know what that was supposed to be like, death or what, but it makes you scared of death for sure. <laughs> this one is St. John the Baptist preaching. And there he is. He's right there hanging out, getting his preach on, letting people know. <laughs> Jan the Younger. I don't really understand this one. Oh, I read the wrong one. I read the artist again. This is uh, Summer Flowers in, ooh, can't read that. Wanley Crack Porcelain Bowl. That's what we'll say it is, but. Mm. <laughs> oh, this is pretty. You can see a little snake down there, too, slithering about. This one's called, oh, Serpents and Insects, that makes sense. And there's the butterflies hanging out. Uh, one's getting eaten by a frog. Two snakes are mad at each other over here. Interesting. This is another example of something that there's, there's a lot, a lot going on, but you just don't see it all. This is just a massacre of some sort with <laughs> a bunny tied up, dead, dead birds, dead birds, dead ducks. What is this called? Still light of fruit with lobster and dead game. So it's pretty self-explanatory. It's just a, a painting of animals being butchered this time. This one is called Still Life with Fruit and a Ledger. So this is the fruit here. Um, the ledger is down below it. In that case, a ledger is just like a main book. Don't worry, we're almost upstairs, if you care. <laughs> but for the three people currently watching, hello, in case you aren't caught up, I'm doing a tour of the New Orleans Museum of Art. So if you were wondering where this is, this is the Museum of Art. It's fun. This one is fish heaped on the beach. Ew. It's kind of slimy looking. <laughs> So, these are looking more Italian style again, and there's only a few left, so I'm just going to do a quick little look view. This one is St. John the Baptist preaching. This one is uh, Dutch. I'm speeding it up because there's a tour guide group that's over there. You can kind of hear the lady talking. I don't want to like talk over her or have to compete with her, so I'm about to hurry up and go upstairs to the next zone. This one is a portrait of the Martini family. Oh wow, this is really cool. He looks so nice up there, hanging out, <laughs> holding some grapes for her. And this last one here is a homo bulla. Oh boy, blowing bubbles. I definitely didn't get that. It's an interesting painting. He looks very much older than he is. And now we're gonna do these quick ones right here. Oh, thank you so much. I'm trying to make it easier for y'all. Um, I'm just going to say Dread Advocate. I don't know what your real name is, but hi. But I wanted to do this for a long time because I wanted to be able to let people see the Museum of Art that didn't know or weren't aware that it's free on Wednesdays. And I wanted to go with my friends, but they weren't available. So I figured I'd just do a live and take y'all with me because it would be fun. And plus, if you haven't been in a while, it's really fun to see it. Also, frankly, <laughs> if you're like home and off, there's nothing better than watching somebody else do something for you. Like you get to see the art museum, but you can stay on your couch while I do it. <laughs> Um, this one is seen in a bardello, bordello. Her, her head's looking a little funny if you look close. Up. It almost looks like she got her face photoshopped onto that spot, but I don't know. This one is old lady scraping carrots. Up top. So I'm going to make sure you can see from your angle. Okay. And then down here is a kitchen interior with woman scoring pans. That's what she's doing. And this kid is just like, I don't know what he's up to. <laughs> this one is Flemish. I don't know what Flemish means. That sounds like a familiar word. I guess it could mean flair or like voice. Like anybody out there, if you know what Flemish means or if you want to look it up, 
I don't know what Flemish means in this case, but I think it means flare, maybe. I know phlegm, phlegm is like that gross nastiness, but Flemish, I think that's kind of like a good thing. This one is an elderly bearded man. I'm sorry, my voice, an elderly bearded man. There we go. <laughs> I actually really love paintings of elderly bearded men. I don't know why, especially when they're done like this, like the lighting and everything on his beard, like it's beautiful looking, I think, but I don't know, something about pictures of old people, <laughs> it makes me happy. Okay, hi Sarah. Oh wow, that's even better. That makes me even happier. See, that especially, like people that don't live in the same state as me, like you probably won't get to visit the New Orleans Museum of Art anytime soon. So this, yeah, yeah, enjoy Sarah. And hi Sarah, nice to meet you. And Southern Dutch. Oh, it's Southern Dutch. Okay, thank you, Miss Anne. So that word Flemish is Southern Dutch, as according to Miss Anne. Thank you. And this is an African woman. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry. Like, some of these are, again, very self-explanatory, but it's just like, this is an African woman. Like, yeah, duh. Can you give us more details? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put my mask back on because I'm going upstairs now. Again, they told me I didn't really have to do it, but I don't want to, um, I don't want to go around other people not with a mask. I just feel like it's rude. It's like that at the restaurant, too, that I work at. They said that we can stop wearing masks now, but I'm like, me and two elderly people are the only people that, like, hold out just because, like, I don't, it, for me, I just don't want to make people uncomfortable like that. And plus, I still feel like you could still get sick, other people can still get sick even with the vaccine. So it's like, I don't want to stress people out, especially old people. I'm lucky in that I've never gotten COVID, knock on wood, knock on wood real hard. But still, I don't want to like make people who have had it or people that are scared be like, ugh. Strange times we live in, strange times. Okay. So I might have been wrong. I hear the voice everywhere. I don't know. <laughs> oh, this is a cool behind me this. Oh, that's cool. This looks nice. So this is what the museum looks like on the inside. It's pretty cool. And the lighting. This is between time. It's a mixture of aluminum and copper. Honestly, what it looks like to me is a creepy cocoon, like like a giant person is going to burst out of it. <laughs> and that's why I wouldn't make the best sort of uh, guide, because I'd be going around and be like, so this is a giant cocoon. This is where a giant monster will burst out. <laughs> okay. Cool. Okay, so now this is the Ancestors in Stone exhibit. So for this one, we're going to be looking at all sorts of stone sculptures. This one will be slightly quicker, I want to say. Hello. Because since it's not paintings, it's just tools. I'm just going to kind of show you the tools because they, they do have names for them, but it's, it's, it's just necklace. Sorry, I was saying somebody wanted to go uh, live together. I don't really know what that means. Like, would they be also on half the screen or something? These little goblins. Okay, also, yeah. So also they don't even tell you like a name name. Most of them just say um, stone. So <laughs> that's that, that's what they are. Thank you, Stephanie. I'm enjoying showing the art. <laughs> So, okay, so we're back to names again. This one is, ooh, this is Italian, I want to say again. Noli mi tangier, tangere, tangier, tangiri. Noli mi tangieri. Mm, I hope I got that. Noli mi tangieri. I don't know what that means, but that's what this is. <laughs> it's probably more Italian that I don't understand, but that's what's happening. This one is Arito, the muse of love and poetry. That's really nice. You could see that too. She looks very like happy and poetic in her life. 
Hi, Jackson, Mississippi. Hi, Julie. So this one was by Simon. Uh, what does that even mean? <laughs> Who took it? Where did it go? These are the mysteries I need to know. <laughs> um, this one is just a self-portrait of Nicholas D. Lar. Mm, I think that's in Spanish. That's like a ye sound, but this is French, so I don't know what that would be. Nicholas D. Largelli. Largelli. Hmm. Largelli. I'm gonna have to go with that. I'm not gonna pretend that I know <laughs> how to understand every language out there, but I try. It's always good to at least try and sound things out, even if it's in another language. You might something might click in your brain, you know. Hello from Baton Rouge. Hello Queen Ra. I wonder if some of the artists get donated at the museum or just get made. I'm wondering if some of the art gets donated and the museum just names the pieces off observations. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if that is the case, especially like if they just, like you said, if they just get donated stuff without a name and they don't have any instructions, they probably just say, there, that's what we're going to name it, because that's what it seemed like with that one with the African-American woman. It's just like, oh great, this is an African-American woman. That's what we're going to call it. <laughs> Even though it's like, okay. Um, this one is the ideal view of... Tivoli, I think it's, oh, Tivoli, 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 we're going to say Tivoli. <laughs> this is like a little scenic route. You can see, again, they have some sort of column bits up here. I think it might be maybe Roman, Greece type of thing. It is Italian, right? I know it's French, so, oh, they have a little blurb, though. I keep on forgetting to read the little blurbs. Oh, caught up in the 17th century, landscape painting. He will wander the Italian countryside, sketching and observing. Okay, so it is the Italian countryside, and it is Tivoli. It says that in the name. I should have just put the pieces together. <laughs> this one is... <laughs> New Orleans grammar. Turlet. Turlet. The turlet of psych. <laughs> but it says toilet, but yeah. Turlet. <laughs> I don't see a toilet actually in here, but... You know, I don't know what they're talking about, but I guess it's kind of hidden. Maybe they just didn't want to show the toilet, or maybe that's what they call the whole bathroom. This one isn't even vague. This is just random. The toilet of psyche. <laughs> that's weird. Um, this one is called, ooh, oh, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> about that. Um, now, I know from Bacchus, this could be like Bach. A Bacca. Abaca Nalain? Nalain? Abaca Nalain? Uh, that's what I'm gonna go with. <laughs> <laughs> but in, uh, what is that, French? It means that this naked girl is uh, playing her tambourine, and this one dude's like, hey, baby. <laughs> <laughs> this is Madame Elizabeth painting the portrait of Queen Mary Antoinette. Cool. So this is uh, Marie Antoinette getting her painting done. And also this is supposed to be one of her chairs, right? It just says it's a chair, <laughs> but it looks exactly like a chair in the painting over there. Oh, yeah, and there's Marie Antoinette again. So yeah, I'm going to assume it's like her chair. So don't sit in it. It also says do not sit in chair, but I know some old petty person. Oh, this is really cool too. I didn't mention this, but it looks like they have like these terminals where you can learn about the, the painting. They didn't have this before. I'm not sure if it talks. Oh, cool. So you, oh, that's cool. So you can, gotcha. Cool. Wow. So it like actually breaks it down kind of like a Google image search. You just tap on different parts about the artist. That's cool. I'm not going to go through the whole thing of that just because it seems like it would be too time tasking. <laughs> this one is the morning. So it's just morning time. People are getting up. Oh, wow, this is really beautiful, though. I love the, the scenery of it. And you can see there's a fire raging in the background starting to happen. I don't know if it's like if they're aware of it and it's a good thing or a bad thing. But over here, you have some fishermen just happy in their lives. And then you can see ships in the distance, too. But I love how they did this sort of misty, foggy background to make it look like it's like midday and there's like a bunch of steam and fog happening like i can't paint for crap so i don't know how they accomplish, how to accomplish that but i like how they make a very clear difference between like it being a foggy day over in the distance and just like nice and clear in this zone 
Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so I would have covered that one. So yeah, there are three behind me, but people are looking at them right now, but you can see them. That's them. It's not that important. <laughs> it's just more Italian stuff. Cool. Is this? Yes. Or is this? I don't want to say it out loud before. Yeah, it looks like this is the Native American section. Good. Cool. Also, since you're in the live, for the, the five people that are here, um, that's part of what I plan on doing. Like, since you're in the live, you get the secrets. <laughs> um, oh, cool. Welcome back. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, since it's uh, November, and November is traditionally Thanksgiving, what I plan to do for November, aside from my regular content, is also do Native American stuff because we also have a big Native American Indian culture in New Orleans. So I thought that would be a good one because, like, these last three months I have plans. Like, October I did Haunting Grounds. November this month I want to do um, Native American and Heritage and also, like, Thankfulness. So I'm going to do some uh, TikToks about being thankful in New Orleans and stuff like that. But um, what I learned for sure from doing the New Orleans Haunting Ground is it's a daunting task. It's really exhausting, especially. Howdy, Dante. I was trying to do it every single day of Halloween, and I got 17 TikToks out of it, so I did at least half of it, but I do have a 9 to 5. I do, unfortunately, work a regular job, so between my regular job, which I work 45 hours a week and four days out of the week, doubles, usually when I'm off, I'm tired, so I, it, was, it was hectic. It was hectic, but I learned from that that I can't do it every single day, but I could at least do it like the last few weeks if I plan it out right, so the last two or three weeks of November, I want to do Native American heritage sort of things on my TikTok, just to kind of blend that, because again, New Orleans has a big Indian culture and background history to it as well. New Orleans has so many things happening to it. When you're a city this old, like, <laughs> you, you have lots of history to you in general. Um, so these definitely, okay, good, because I was about to say, if they have hard names to pronounce them, I, I'm not going to butcher these poor names. This one is the Beaded Bear Apron. Oh, yeah. It's really cute too. I like the little bears that they made and everything. When was this made? This looks pretty fresh. The 19th century? No, this one is the bear apron early 20th century. Style. Okay, so it's the 20th century. That's why it looks so new still. I was like, this doesn't look too beat up. Just think it could have been from way back when. It's still beautiful though. And up top we have what, a headdress. I don't see the name of the headdress. Is this it? No, it doesn't say what the name of the headdress is. And this particular one is a robe. They have a name for it, but I'm just going to zoom in again because I don't want to butcher these Indian names. So that. This one is a beaded panel, and if you get really, really close up, you can see all the little tiny beaded details that they did. Over here we have a pouch. Again, really cool, really pretty. I want to say this is a sheath. Yep, nice sheath. That one was pretty easy for me. <laughs> Come back around to the bags that I passed earlier. This, and they're self-explanatory. They all say bags. They're just bags. They have a particular name to them, but I can't pronounce it. A ben, a ben deer bag. Green cotton wool thread. Very cool. And then in the middle here, where is this one? This is a drum cover. Okay, I thought it was a tablecloth. Shows up my ignorance. Side two here in the, the big room. I really love the way this museum looks like. This looks so beautiful and cool to me. The architecture of it all. They have paintings out here too, but I'm going to go to the next floor up to look for those other works, or to look for the other works in the museum first. 
before I focus on the ones out here. I'll focus on the ones out here like when I'm about to leave or headed towards leaving. Now the thing is, okay, good. I thought I was going crazy. I was like, I could have sworn they had stairs that went up to another level. I thought I was going mad. So this is where the next level is. And that should lead to more African-American study techniques. But I want to still look around here because on this floor, because yeah, they have lots more interesting stuff. This one is Orientalism, taking and making. Orientalism describes the widespread popularity of European and American artists taking inspiration from and people, both real and imagined, of Middle Eastern, North African, and East Asian cultures. So yeah, that's more what I want to get because this, see, I like this. But see, the thing I don't like about this is this particular one, it's like, what are you trying to say? Are you trying to say that he killed her because he's from a different a place? I don't like that, but the detail of it is really beautiful. This lady dead reminds me of a different painting. I can't really remember the pain. Oh, it reminds me of that creepy painting where there's like a lady laying down kind of like this and like a demon thing is sitting on top of her. I forgot what that one was called, but it's supposed to be like, like the dream monster and it's like sitting on top of the lady. If you look up like dream paralysis or sleep paralysis, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's really creepy. It's just like a lady like, just like that and a monster thing just like sitting on top of her. It's like, you're not gonna get no good sleep tonight. This one is Charge of Arabs. Looks really cool. And I love this, like the font of it that they use. It's really cool. This one, this one, too. This one is called Blue Kimono. Pretty self-explanatory again. That makes sense. Give her kimono on. Oh, this is cool. I love this. This is... Oh, wait. Well, this is a portrait of a woman. It says untitled. Oh, there we go. Portrait of a woman untitled. I can see my phone in the screen in the screen. <laughs> but it's an actual live portrait, which I think is cool. Oops, don't touch the walls. See, I'm trying to get up close so you can see her good. See? Hello, Sean. Hello, everyone. Still at the Museum of Art. Still doing art stuff. <laughs> so this one is the summit of, I can't pronounce that word, that word. It's the summit of that word. <laughs> oh, this is an actual picture, too. That's really cool. It's hard to do it with my phone in my hand because I don't want the, the glare to bob the screen for you. Basically, just rockiness. This one is do it with my phone in my hand because I don't want the, the glare to bob the screen for you. Basically, just rockiness. This one is the snake charmer. The people in this one, again, look really realistic. Like, even though they don't have, like, down-down features, like, this man here, really, this looks like a picture of this man. And then over here, this person, like, you can't really distinctly see his face, but you can definitely see a face happening that you could, like, recognize in the streets or something. This one is called The First Sketch of the Pest House at, at Hafe. I don't really understand that one. But this is what it says, just to <laughs> go back to it. First Sketch for the Pest House at Hafe? Hmm. They have a little blurb there. This is the cool stuff. And then this one is, ooh, cannot pronounce it again. I know that's KVB and I know that's Spanish, but this word, the Zulav, the Zulav KVB, the Zulav, the Zulav, mm. sorry, <laughs> don't know that one. Here's a cool picture of somebody. On an entire 
a cool picture of somebody on an entire elephant. And that one's called Elephant in the Trainer. Here's a cool picture of somebody on an entire elephant. And that one's called Elephant in the Trainer. Pretty self explanatory. Hello. 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 And that one's called Elephant in the Trainer. Pretty self explanatory. Hello. 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 This girl looks like Scarlett Johansson. I'm sure that wasn't the painter's intent. <laughs> this one is called Whispers of Love, which definitely makes sense. That's low key for just being like, hey girl, that boy think you cute. You probably think that boy cute too. This one is the portrait of Miss Asher. Just doing her thing, living it up. This one is a Roman holiday. Judging by the look of the one girl, I'm probably thinking there was maybe, in, in Roman times, they definitely had gladiator fights or something. She probably saw somebody get killed and she's like, ooh, girl, I don't know if I can do this again. <laughs> I've seen this one before in like pictures. This one is Far Away Thoughts. It very much seems like that too. I love her hair and the painting of it, like the colors are really beautiful. This one is called Angelique. There is a lot going on in this to say it's just called Angelique. This is the opposite of the other paintings. This one's like, it's like that's all the name you could come up with, but all of this, all of this happening. So there's like some sort of angel on some sort of griffin over here because you can't see too good, but it has like claws and an eagle's head and some random knight. And she's shackled to a rock and she's naked and there's a storm raging in the ocean. It's just a lot. That poor girl. Nobody's going to save her at that rate. This one is Shrine of Venus. Which I could see. It's just three chicks hanging out, just living their best lives, loving it. This one is Woman in Red. And then the one below that is the Terrace at the Tavern. There's a name for it, the tavern, but again, it's 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 not a word that I want to butcher too bad. Traflogar, 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 something like that. This one is Young Woman in Ball Gown. Once again, pretty easy to, to grasp. <laughs> there she is, living her best life. Ooh, this is my zone. This is the one I was interested in seeing. It's uh, a brief history of photography and transmission. The youngest picture of all the pictures of me that was introduced. Cool. So this is going to be interesting because we get to see a lot of cool old pictures like this. I'm trying not to get the phone out on the screen. It's kind of hard. Wow. I just love looking at like actual photographs from the past because you get to see what people were up to, what things were happening. This is like a negative photo of a building. It's kind of hard to see. Pretty cool. There's this. Oh, I love this. This is High Street. Oh, it's Scottish. It's somewhere in Scotland. I love alleyway pictures like this. I have one like this from when I went to Morocco with my mom. It's like these two kids just like running in the alley. It's one of my favorite pictures I took. But I just love little alleyways like that. Oh cool, look at this. I'm trying to maneuver it so I don't get too much of the glare from the phone. This one's harder for you to see, but it's a guy sitting on a railroad track. And what is it called? It's untitled, so it's called the guy on a railroad track. <laughs> a 
cool. This one has a little bear and a little house and, and a little house with people and the photographer is in there too. This was the early Kodak camera. Oh wow. Moon landing pictures. This one's just, I think, Louis yeah, New Orleans, New Orleans area. So this is what New Orleans looks like from the big old map. Or like in here somewhere. I think this area, or maybe here. I don't know. Since these are all, most of these are untitled. No, most of these are titled, but they're just kind of static, so. also fun to look at pictures too and try to figure out how they got it. I believe this one was a light bulb because I don't see sort of coils. They just kind of like did a slow shutter speed and kind of made that draggy image effect. Same with this one. I've done it before where you basically just um, you take a flash to freeze the image in place and then you leave a long shutter exposure so it can keep on dragging the light along with it. It's a really cool. Though it's a, um, yeah, I was about to say it's a hard technique to make really cool or useful except to like make light street, but this person did it really well. Cause you can see they have the fireworks shooting out and they froze in time with the streaks. And then same thing with this, like they were able to freeze whatever this was that was happening. And this is a live picture too. So it looks really, really cool again because of the stupid glare of the phone and everything. It's hard for you to like really appreciate what's going on, but it looks really cool. That's cool. This one I'm not entirely sure of how they accomplished. Um, let's see, I'm trying to just keep the glare off of it. So there's a helicopter rover here, but then there's also like a light wave shooting off and going up and up and up. I don't know how they did that. I guess maybe they put a light on the propeller and the water shoot up. I'm not really sure, but it's cool looking. Those pictures, but I'm gonna say this is part of haunting grounds because they could also be ghost images. So, see for instance, this girl kind of has this orb around her. It's like not her, but the picture itself. That's like, like everything's in trend is clear except for her. This one has a blur right in front of the the whole family. So I think you know could be a ghost of somebody standing up there. Same with this. That's what people used to believe back in the day, like with spirit photography, that if you could see something like this, it was probably like the ghost of somebody hovering over you or something. And same with this one, you can see like the baby, and you have a blur, well you can barely even see the baby, because there's so much like blur over that, it could have been like the mom watching over the baby or something. Just a thought. Yosemite National Park. This is really cool. This is oh Rio de Janeiro. Where's that big old statue of what's that thing saying? I don't see it. This is from 1960. I don't know when that giant Rio statue was made, but I feel like I should see it somewhere and I'm glad I don't. If anybody out there knows when it came to be, maybe that will explain why I don't see it in the picture anywhere. Because it's a giant statue, you should be able to see it. I think it's usually like up on this somewhere. Hmm. Or maybe that's it in the distance. I, it's hard for you to see because there's a little tiny speck way over there. Maybe it's just like not the location for it. I'm just kind of glossing over the photography ones because 
it's too hard to see with the glare from the phone, so it's kind of like ruining the moment for you guys. <laughs> so I'm just kind of showing you from far away so you can see it with a little less glare. And then I'm going to go to the exhibits that have more stuff that's not in glass, so you're not just getting reflection. In fact, this is all more photography stuff. I might actually come back to this part later after I do the live, just so I can see it. Because, again, I would like you to see everything in the museum, but with the glare, it's just too much. See, it's just like too extra to try to work with. So I want to like take up your time in the museum with me, <laughs> just looking at glary pictures. And these are all just like, kind of like black pictures. I'm not sure what's going on in these. Something weird and creepy, I want to say. This is an example of double exposure. So Take a picture of the hands first, and then put a picture of the lady and put them on top. Same thing they did here. This could also be accomplished too if you just um, took a projector and put a projected image over somebody. They, they've done that a lot recently too. Like I can't think of who it is, but some artist recently did that. Oh, that's interesting looking. I don't know what's going on in the picture, but it looks cool. Oh, okay. It's, she's standing on a police officer. That's what I'm looking at. I like that. This must be new. Yeah, 2020. No peace, no justice. Interesting. I think this is actually like a a still of a video because she doesn't, if you look closely, you can see it's really, really pixelated like a screen. This is cool. I think they did this with Photoshop though, but they could have done it for real. It's like images from TV that they like froze and then put onto this. So there's more painting this way, but we're actually going to skip to going this way because there's more items that y'all can see. So I can actually look at things that don't have glare to them. Like this. That says don't touch. This is Big Ed. I'm not sure what's going on with Big Ed or what it is. <laughs> this is something that was purchased with funds donated by John E. Bullard. Or E. John Bullard. <laughs> I don't know why I got dyslexic just now. <laughs> Some bracelets and such. More beautiful glass pieces. These are cool looking. I love this, this beautiful reflective chair. It doesn't look at all comfortable, but it is at least interesting to look at. This one looks like a big booty chair. <laughs> That's where the big booty goes. It looks like a peach. This one's good. That guy feels some way about something over here. Making a good point. <laughs> it is just stuff. <laughs> this is a cool little red chair here. does bring up a good point, you know, art is subjective, so it's like, what is art to you? His uh, argument is basically that it's just a key, it's just a kettle, it doesn't count. Number 
he's got the holders to the chair. I don't know what this, what this is about, but it looks cool. It's very cool style wise. <laughs> but I do agree. He's leaving now. But basically, he was just you know, saying like, that doesn't count as art. That's just a tea kettle. That's just a seat. Technically, that's pretty true. Like, um, art is very subjective. That's what I like to say all the time. This to you is probably art. He's still standing over there. Not everything is considered art to everybody. This, I think, could be better stated as a, um, what would you call it? This is not necessarily art, but like a time capsule. That's it. This is kind of like a time capsule of things that have happened and that we have had throughout the years, like the chairs, the lamps, and things like that. I think if they um, called it a time capsule, they would have less people like him. Like he was, li I don't know if you can hear him in the background, but he was like, he was like having a temper tantrum. He was like, what is this? This isn't art. This is a tea kettle. Tea kettles aren't art. What is this? This is a phone. Phones aren't art. <laughs> and it's like, like I didn't say anything because like I kind of agree with him. Like I would have butted him and said, how dare you, sir? This is art. But he's kind of right. Like it is just tea kettles and staplers and cups. But from a time capsule point of view, it's kind of art. I don't know if time capsules count to everybody as art, but that's what the intent of this particular room was, because it's objects and things that you can see from the past. And some of them, like he was even saying, this is art, because it's like pottery things. But again, it's kind of, it's subjective. What is art to you? Like some people think of art as like the paintings that we just passed up, but then some people think of art as like coolly designed chairs and stuff. Like furniture can be art in its own design. Like that's why they have things like home decor and things. but they don't necessarily call home decor art, but I do feel like it could be considered art if it's done in a way that's aesthetically pleasing. So that was a good argument that he brought up. I mean, next time I find him, I'm gonna find him and be like, sir, sir, you brought up a good point. <laughs> but he, he was very much just like, this is an art. Hmm. <laughs> so maybe I won't talk to him. <laughs> wow, look at this one. My friend Eliana, she loves iridescent things, things that have like a shimmery, rainbowiness to it so I know she would love this little box here. She would probably try to break into here just to get that many. <laughs> and they have some ivory boxes too. Maybe that's ivory. I'm not good with um stones and stuff. I think that's ivory but it could also be opalite or some sort of shimmery compound like that. I think opal does leave like it's either opal or opalite that has that sort of rainbow iridescent. Hi Kelsey from California. Is it Kelsey or Chelsea? I think it's Kelsey. I don't want to mispronounce your name, and I know that's a big, a big thing for like Kelsey's versus Chelsea's. I worked with a Kelsey, and I called her Chelsea <laughs> just like the first time meeting. Her. She was like, "No, it's actually Kelsey." <laughs> like she said, just like that. Okay, okay. And she's like, "No, it's not, I'm not mad. I'm just I'm not showing you. No, it's Kelsey, not Chelsea." It's like, "Okay, okay, I got it, I got it, I got it." <laughs> so hello, Kelsey from California. Hopefully, that got it right. So this is more pottery and art things but again it depends on what you think of what art has being if you think of art as like cool old furniture then this is art but if you think of it only as being like paintings of guys from the renaissance painting then here's your art <laughs> and this one is called a portrait of colonel george watson Ooh. oh cool do i actually get to open the drawer there's a thing, these are portrait miniatures, and you can see that they're like tiny people, but it says open drawer slowly, so I guess I can open this, but what's in it? Oh, cool, oh wow, look, there's a black man. Is that a black man? It looks like a black man, yeah, a light-skinned black man. I know I sound like surprised, but like, honestly speaking, I've never seen um, the, uh, I've never seen like black people in like an old Renaissance thing. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I put the mask back on when I'm around people, but like I don't, the lady at the front told me I didn't have to wear it, but as I've already mentioned a couple of times, I just don't want to be rude to the people that like are still scared and everything. So when I'm around people, I put it back on, but just so you can hear me and so I can like actually live. <laughs> it's okay to breathe in. Some more people. I'm not sure if these are like miniatures that are like real that they made or if it's like, I don't know. <laughs> Ooh, I love this lighting. Welcome to art. This is art. <laughs> yeah. Um, what is this one? This one is like, I don't know, like a tea set? I have no clue what this is. What is this? Sterling silver. Got the gift in the book. Yeah. This magnificent centerpiece takes inspiration from Eastern.
Tan Tanudada Temple, characterized by its canopy with upturned edges of the centerpiece from Rome to. Uh, what? This elaborate form would be displayed as a body for. What? <laughs> okay, so it basically just gave me the runaround with that description. It's like, this is a centerpiece that's used for the center of the house, and you could put fruit on it. But what is it? <laughs> it doesn't tell me what it actually is, but whatever. <laughs> this is um, an old dresser drawer. This one's, um, what is it called, Imani? Queen Anne style. This is the Queen Anne style of Cheshire, Cheshire drawer. Cheshire, 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 <laughs> Cheshire drawer. <laughs> um, we already came past the seat. I won't touch the seat. I'm tempted to because I like to touch things that tell me don't touch sometimes, but I'm on live. I'm going to be an adult or at least pretend that I'm an adult. <laughs> this is another curio cabinet and a painting as well of... General George Washington. Oh, you got fat, George. You don't look that, <laughs> he looks skinnier on our dollar bills. Oh, there we go. See, this is George Washington when he got older. That's the one I'm used to, but this is him when he was younger. So I guess that fat kind of drooped down to down there. No shade, I'm just saying. <laughs> there was definitely a, a change in character with him. Oh, cool, it's a mirror too. Ooh, this mirror looks cursed. This looks like the Oculus mirror from, <laughs> remember that movie Oculus? And it's kind of like slightly stained. I think that's how they get the reflection on it, though. I think this is like how they, how they did mirrors back in the day before they figured out glass. Or the glass is like really old. I don't know if you'll understand what I'm saying, but like mm, if you leave a mirror for a long time out in the sun or out, out in natural light, it'll start to get that sort of corrody, graded look on it. I'm not sure why it happens or what it's from, but yeah. <laughs> This is the portrait of Sophia Cohen. It's beautifully done. I love her skin and her eyes in the picture. It looks nice. Ooh, I want to show you a cool clock. Look at this. That looks expensive. I'd like to have one of those. Not really. <laughs> it looks a little too ornate for my style. I'm, I don't know if you can tell from my general style, but I'm usually <laughs> a pretty like jeans and t-shirt type of person. I do like uh, to dress dress up every now and then, but for the most part, I'm just like, this is too much work, too much work. This is another dresser and chair set. So we're on the second floor right now. After I clear this little bit of room, we're gonna go up to the next floor, because on the next floor, they actually have the Indian American uh, thing. Oh, wow. Cool. This is like just a little glass room in here. I love this. This is cool, this is nice. And look, you can see down there, you can see down New Orleans. This is nice. It says this area is closed, so I'll just leave it be. Oh no, that, that elevator is closed. There's a thing here, so I guess I'm not supposed to go that way. I'm just going to step around it anyway, though. Because I really like the lighting in here. <laughs> okay, it's nothing. I thought it was a secret exhibit they were trying to keep from me. Like, you can't keep exhibits from me. <laughs> you see over there too. They have really cool design outside as well. It's like a courtyard. Maybe I'll go there when I leave out. I haven't been to the courtyard before, but it looks really cool. Got some tanks here and some peopleses. Oh wow, look at this mirror. It's really cool. It's a what? Rusticated? It's called rusticated, so this is rusticated. I guess that's like rustic and sophisticated mixed together. That's kind of cute. Is that, they don't mention if that's what it means in the blurb, but I'm gonna say that's what it means. It's rusticated. Are these actual stairs up somewhere? Oh, no, I got tricked by the do not touch stairs. <laughs> so now, putting my mask back on, my mask earring, <laughs> we're making our way back upstairs so that I can see the next wave of things. I believe it's the Indian American things or the African American um, outfits that they have up on the third floor. But again, I haven't actually been here in like three years. Actually, I said seven years. It's seven or three years and there's a wild variation, but it's one of those. The last time I came here, that's what it was, but they change up the museum every couple of, I don't know how long, <laughs> they change it sometimes. 
Now this is the Arts of Japan exhibit. This one I might have to go through again just because it's a lot of glare and a lot of low light, so you might not actually be able to see anything really good from out here. So I'm just going to kind of do a little quick drive-by of things. Matt Peoples. We have some bones over here, too. find this part of the museum to be kind of creepy just because there's just so many things around that look like they could be like cursed. <laughs> statues and sculptures that they have. Oh wow, I didn't even notice this thing. It's pretty cool. Or pretty creepy. I'm not sure which yet. Mm, I'm going to go with creepy. Is this like something? Is it like a gateway? Okay. It doesn't look like it's a gateway, so it's all safe. <laughs> too though so I could have like did camera stuff and got video while I was also getting live stuff but life and such it looks like the third floor I thought they have four floors but they only have actually three floors so I think since it's four and I've been doing this for like an hour now and I've gotten all the major things covered I'm going to say bye now because I want to actually do some video up here too and some TikTok of all the museum just so I could like have a TikTok for the people that missed it tonight. So that's actually what I'm going to do. So yeah, <laughs> thank you so much for joining me for my museum date and I hope to see you in the future for more stuff like this. Bye!